Coming up on Inside California Education. We really need to let them know law enforcement is, isn't against them. They're, they're there to help them uh, and, and to serve as a role model to these kids. Discover how a running program in Modesto is building trust between police officers and kids as they train together to complete a 10K race. Educators are using dance to motivate students in some Los Angeles schools, giving young people an outlet to burn off some energy while learning math and social skills. I was kind of a skeptic in the beginning, and once I got behind the wheel and started driving the bus, I say, wow, this is really nice. See how and why a school district in Sacramento has invested in what's believed to be the largest fleet of electric school buses in the nation. Um, seven pound, is that one? And meet some hardworking students with disabilities. They're employed at businesses throughout Rockland as they transition from the classroom to the workplace. It's all next on Inside California Education. Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $34 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $211 for each full-time student, based on $1.7 billion contributed in fiscal year 2017-18. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery. Imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Usually when law enforcement is in contact with somebody, there's something wrong going on. Let, let's be real there, it, it usually is something wrong. This isn't that. We're not here to investigate anything. We're not here to take anybody to jail. We're just here. We're just here to run with you. It's really broken those barriers. You see those smiling faces. You don't see that, that fear. We really need to let them know law enforcement is, isn't against them. They're, they're there to help them uh, and, and to serve as a role model to these kids. Detective Sean Dodge is with the Modesto Police Department. Today, he's running with students at Shackelford Elementary School in Modesto. He's part of a program called 10K with a Cop. We're gonna stretch, so we just do one lap and then we need to stretch. That's just a warm up, guys, okay? Four days a week, you'll see a group of little kiddos out there. Very simple, just reach up as high as you can. And they stay after from 2.30 to 3.30 and they run around the playground with certain law enforcement officials. Sue McCann is the principal at Shackelford Elementary. She, along with Detective Dodge and other law enforcement officials, teamed up to create 10K with a cop in 2018. Shackelford is not the only school that's participating. We have multiple agencies going to multiple schools throughout San Salas County. Because I'll tell you what, if I wasn't, I'd be going all over the place too. So just step on the tippy toes, okay? It's a beautiful relationship that they're establishing and it saves a lot of these kids. Many of these students who participate have endured a lot of hardships at such a young age. They don't have a father figure in their life right now. They don't have a mother figure in their life right now. So right now, um, they're very at risk. And a lot of students, um, you know, they don't have the best impression of law enforcement. Um, all you have to do is turn on the news. That Chicago police officer charged with murdering a teenager firing 16 shots officer excessive. It's been rough, and that's, that's the thing. We have those conversations. For example, I'll be running with a kid, and I'll talk, start talking about a law enforcement officer that came to their house the night before. And they just may assume, because I'm a, a police officer, oh, it was you. 
you shut up at my house last night and it wasn't me. Uh, but, but we're able to break those barriers and maybe explain uh, a, a little bit about why we did what we did uh, and maybe get some explanation too from them as far as this is what's going on in the home. Basically, we're just letting those conversations take place more organically and more uh, on their terms, not ours. Something negative has turned into something very beautiful, very positive. This is something I do on my own. Um, I don't get compensated for it. When you talk to the community about the fact that you're doing this on your own time, I, I think it makes a bigger statement for what we're doing. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I know um, instead of being with their families, they come and see us to encourage us. And that's why I would like to thank them. Being with the cop is amazing. And I might even be a cop when I grow up. I just want to be a cop when I grow up. Or a runner. Our goal, besides the relationship building, is to have these kids complete a 10K. Good job, good job. Finish it up. Obviously, nobody's going to go out there and run 6.2 miles, especially a child, uh, at the beginning of all of this. Uh, so we basically building mile upon mile uh, till we reach that 6.2 miles. One, two, three. Take care of the Good job, guys. We'll see you guys. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. four. Loudly. Hi, man. After several months of preparation, the youngsters are ready to do their very first 2K run. <laughs> Students. Oh, I got time. Ready to go. Parents. Faculty and law enforcement from across the county have gathered on this early morning to participate. There's nothing more rewarding when you see communities come together. All the kids, let's get together close. We're going to start running. It's just amazing to see them actually have a goal and they're accomplishing it every month in these runs. And what a great life skill, right? The power of yet. You're not there yet, but you keep working hard and you'll get there. I love to see hard work come to fruition, and I'm seeing that. Good, good job. They cross over those finish lines and those parents are there. Yeah, woo. All right. Just to see them accomplish a goal that they probably never thought was possible. Finished. Running is a lot like life. You're going to have those uphills and those downhills. Uh, sometimes those uphills are rough, you know, and in life sometimes those uphills are rough as well. And teaching these kids to push past that and set goals to move past these challenges in life. Doing good, don't quit. Don't quit. Push it, push it. Push it, push it. Nice job. Good job. Man. This is important. It's our future. Nice job. Come on, come on. You got it. Boom. Since 10K with a Cop was founded, kids have run more than 22,000 miles alongside law enforcement officers. School programs in California's Central Valley and Los Angeles reach 650 students a year, emphasizing the importance of physical activity while also building crucial relationships that organizers hope will last long beyond the finish line. Ready, steady, go! I was expecting it to be like move around thing that would get my energy out more because I'm pretty energetic. There's no question about Connor and his friend Curtis being energetic, and the California Dance Institute gives them and others lots of chances to use that energy. And I was hoping it'd help me get my energy out, and it did. And it's really fun, and I'm pretty excited. 
you know, I practice and practice. This is what I used to do when I was a kid. I used to like dance in front of the mirror. And I, if I made a step wrong, I used to always do it again. The California Dance Institute, or CDI, began in the early 1990s. Following a professional dance career, Carol Valeski moved into arts education and established a Southern California program for schools, patterned after the work of the National Dance Institute, founded in New York by dancer Jacques D'Amboise. The aim is to motivate children towards excellence, and I just thought this was amazing and made enormous sense to me as a dancer because I knew what dance had given me and then I got into arts education and remembered Jacques' program and it just made such enormous sense to me, um, both suiting my personality and my professional background. Today, CDI programs in 10 Los Angeles area schools do more than just provide an alternative form of physical or arts education. Students learn energetic, intricate choreography leading up to public performances at the end of the school year. Live music is part of every class. And there's something else going on here. What I loved about the way these ladies did it is they were just like zapping their arms like um, lightning. Like lightning. So in a dance, they have to work as a team, right? So they don't just do their own steps in a vacuum. They do steps that are coordinated with other children. They have to change directions. They have to relate to one another. So they're getting a social um, benefit as well and you know they're in control of every aspect of their body. We have a routine every single week for every class. We always start with a warm-up with all groups. We flip different sides of the room so that the students who like to hide in the back of the group aren't always stuck in the back. The CDI program at Carthay Elementary, a magnet school in West Los Angeles, is funded with parent contributions and CDI foundation support. Each Thursday, Juan Alvarez's third grade class and Jimmy Lansing's fourth grade students know it's their time to dance. Uh, you know, Thursday, the morning they show up with this energy, they're already excited. Half of them wear their CDI shirts and, and they, you know, they kind of rush us through the day because that's the end of our day and they really just can't wait to get in there. As part of the regular curriculum, students are graded on their participation. And teachers say the dance work can directly impact the students' academic work. The best crossover is math, uh, because dancing has a lot of fractions in it, it has sequencing in it. Um, I see them understanding those areas better once we come back. Students, when they're working as a team, their actual scores have actually increased in math as well as in English language arts because they now know how to work as a team in finding the solutions to their problems and so forth. Five, six, ready, go. Nose front, nose front, one. Arts programs have been shown to keep students interested in school and help bridge differences in diverse cultural populations like Carthay. I like to say that Carthay is a representative of the city of Los Angeles. We have our demographics consist of uh, Latino students, uh, African American students, we have Indian students, we have students who are white. We have a little bit of everyone here at our school. We even have Russian students that are attending our school and for some of our students they come here not speaking the language but through dance they're able to form a form of communications where it allows them to communicate in a different way and they are excited about the program. Students wanting more opportunities to dance can be invited to join after school programs where the work is more intense and the skill level increased. I think the most fun part is when you see the dance come together and it works with the music and you realize like, oh, now I get it. I really like CDI because I love dancing. When, dancing is like my, one of my favorite things to do and I love it. It always makes me happy and excited, makes me smile 
and I love it. It's super fun to do. We just get a sense of how proud these kids really are of themselves. Um, I mean, they get to bring home A-plus papers and homeworks and tests and grades and papers to their parents, but for their parents to actually see them physically doing something that they're proud of, I think is really amazing. Still ahead on Inside California Education. They learn a schedule, they learn that they have to do things at a certain time, they learn time management. Students with disabilities get real on-the-job training and a paycheck as part of a program run by the school district in Rockland. But first, hop aboard an electric bus to see why bus drivers and students are so excited about this new technology. What seems to be a typical start of the school day procedure isn't typical at all in the Twin River School District in North Sacramento. Just listen. That's the sound of an electric bus that rides so quietly, those three tones were added so people nearby would know a very large vehicle was approaching. I drove this in San Francisco. And driving through San Francisco, people were very distracted. And I had a couple people almost walk right out in front of me, but the reason they didn't is because they heard that sound. And they looked up like, what was that? <laughs> Twin Rivers is the 27th largest school district in the state, but thanks to generous grants from energy commissions and air pollution control agencies, the district is on pace to have more than 40 electric buses in its fleet. That's more than any other district in the country. So by the year 2021, we should be um, diesel free, 100% alternative fuel. It's clean air for kids and clean air for the communities. Electric buses are quieter because they're not burning diesel for energy. If you don't remember that old-fashioned school bus sound, here it is. Running on electricity also means the bus isn't creating exhaust to be breathed in by students, drivers, and mechanics. There are carcinogens in, in diesel exhaust. Uh, the impact on uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it, it makes sense from just, you know, personal health and the health of the planet. Nate Baggio is vice president of sales for Lion Electric, the leading manufacturer of electric buses. Lion has opened a bus experience center in Sacramento so other school districts can drop in to learn how they work and to determine if they're worth the investment. Up front, electric buses cost two and a half times a traditional diesel bus, but Lion Electric and Twin Rivers say these vehicles eventually pencil out. When you look at 80% less maintenance, 72% less uh, in fuel costs, uh, there's an economic argument. Maintenance costs are, are tremendous on older buses and breakdowns and kids getting to school late. So with the electric bus, we're, with the grant money, we're paying about $55,000 a bus. So that's how we can justify it. The return on investment is huge. The buses are charged when not in use. A bright panel reminds the driver how much battery power and how many miles remain before needing another charge. The range for these buses is 100 miles. Driver Paul Harrison was on board with the new buses pretty quickly. I was kind of a skeptic in the beginning. And once I got behind the wheel and started driving a bus, I say, wow, this is really, really nice. Kids say they enjoy the quieter ride. It's very comfortable, and we play music on the bus sometimes, and it gets very exciting. And it turns out those three tones are pretty memorable. Da -na -na. Me and my granny and my mom says that it sounds like Christmas music. Now you'd think drivers especially would be sick of those tones that ring when the bus is traveling below 15 miles per hour. Nancy, our guide this day, surprised us. Her ringtone shows just how excited she Hello. is driving a bus that's saving energy and cutting emissions. The school bus industry has not done anything to innovate or change in the last 25 years. And here we get to innovate a little bit, and that's exciting, and I enjoy it. I am absolutely thrilled to be a part of it.
School buses are increasingly going high tech across the nation. One app allows parents to use GPS to track their child's school bus in real time, notifying them when it's nearby. In some districts, students swipe card readers when they board the bus, allowing the district and parents to track their location at all times. And more than a dozen states have passed laws to allow exterior cameras on buses, in part to catch drivers who illegally pass school buses that have stopped. Seven pound, is that We do a lot of stocking, getting to know the owners, and helping out customers a lot. Josiah, when you get a chance, can you please uh, clean the front doors? We are at um, the Rockland Denny's, and I am a busser. Here's uh, here, here's the pizza. You got some pizza? Oh, thank you. I work at Blast and Brewer on Friday nights and Saturday nights. Getting that first job can be hard for anyone, but for those with a disability, it can feel nearly impossible. The California Department of Education's WorkAbility program is helping to change that by providing internships for 18 to 22 year olds with disabilities. It starts in the classroom with a focus on the skills these students will need to successfully transition from high school into adult life. We try to prepare them for jobs if that's something they're interested in, teaching them um, money skills, um, teaching them public transportation, just to be independent as possible. There are 18 students in the WorkAbility program at the Rockland Unified School District. Right now, 11 of them are working at local businesses one day a week, earning a paycheck. The funds come from the California Transition Program, which covers insurance, student salaries, and a workplace job coach. Employers say they get an enthusiastic worker who wants to be there, providing an extra hand and a smile. When they come in, they help with stocking the trucks, cleaning fish tanks, helping customers, um, range of tasks, and they really love it. We really love it, having extra smiling faces in our store. 20-year-old Logan Gardner is one of two workability students at this Rockland PetSmart. He says, aside from learning job skills, working with pets helps him deal with his disability. I was born with ADHD, and ever since we got our first husky as a pet, um, I started opening up more because before I wouldn't even talk to my parents when I was even little. Many employers report these students not only experience a growing competence on the job, but increased self-confidence as they realize they're perfectly capable of getting the job done. They walk in, good morning, Paulina. They're just really excited to be here. And when they do start, they're a little more reserved. They don't know exactly what they're doing. They don't know where everything is in the store and I mean today they were just walking around finding product. One product I didn't even know where it was and they found it right away. They learn a schedule, they learn that they have to do things at a certain time, they learn time management. Jackson has learned to interact with a million customers a day and it really helps his like verbal skills and things like that. Jackson Brewer is going on his second year at this Rockland pizza joint. I'm going to be making boxes and folding them and then putting them up here. His first year was through the WorkAbility program. It was such a success, store leaders decided to offer him a job. I think it shows the community that we're willing to help people who just need a job and they need to be taught and they need a little bit extra guidance. And you know, we, we can provide that and we can help them get there. And now he can probably go work at any restaurant and talk to customers just fine. The same can be said for Josiah Chandler, who secured a permanent position at Denny's after his program ended. You know, I like working. I like learning new things and getting the experience in. So like this, right? Yep, perfect. And then you should have probably one more reference. What these students learn on the job complements what they learn in the classroom. Skills like writing a resume and cashing a paycheck. Teacher Holly Gotwell says by the time they leave the program, they're able to do many things that will help them live independent, productive lives. For example, taking the bus independently to their job site, um, taking classes over at Sierra College um, without staff support. So it's really great to see them shine and have that confidence. It's a program that shows not only the students, well, hard work will we'll, we'll get me fine lives, but their coworkers, managers, and customers 
what can be done despite a disability. I just wanted to make sure he knew that his disability doesn't mean anything. He can still do anything he wants to do. And if he wants a job, he can get a job. And he does great at it. If you'd like more information about the program, log on to our website, InsideCalEd.org. We have video from all of our shows, and you can connect with us on social media. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Inside California Education. Ready? Funding for Inside California Education is made possible by... Since 1985, the California Lottery has raised more than $34 billion in supplemental funding for California's 1,100 public school districts from kindergarten through college. That's approximately $211 for each full-time student, based on $1.7 billion contributed in fiscal year 2017-18. With caring teachers, committed administrators, and active parents, every public school student can realize their dreams. The California Lottery. Imagine the possibilities. The Stewart Foundation, improving life outcomes for young people through education. Additional funding for Inside California Education is made possible by these organizations supporting public education.